before we begin the experiment, let's look at the initial setup. We have a power supply here, and that's set up to about 12 volts. It's not too critical. I've got it at 12.2. You can tune it a little bit better if you want to. And the power supply, we will see, is connected. The positive terminal here is connected to our ammeter. And we go into the amps terminal. I'll just tilt that so you can see it. I have the ammeter set on the amps DC range and at this moment it's range to 2 milliamps. That's because we have such a large resistance in the circuit. Then we come at the common terminal and we come to our circuit itself. We have 100k resistor there and an electrolytic capacitor of 100 microfarads. And then, zooming back out again, we can see we return to the power supply. So it's just like one large daisy chain. Next, we want to connect a voltmeter across the capacitor like this. So the voltmeter probes are connected directly across the capacitor the positive probe to the more positive side of the circuit which goes back to the volt ohm port here and the common probe there goes to the common probe on the meter and we set it up to volts DC and at the moment it's measuring the supply voltage pretty much about 12 volts Finally, we wish to have a voltmeter across the resistor. A slightly different multimeter, but the same principles, volts DC, same two ports, and they are connected this time across the resistor. I'll just drag that round a little. So we have one here, which is the positive port, and this is the negative port there. And together, when we add up both voltages, you can see that they pretty much equal the supply voltage of about 12.23. Any extra voltage will be dropped across the leads themselves. Very little extra voltage there. When you're doing this experiment, you may need to short out the capacitor. You may need to discharge the capacitor. I'm just going to show you how to do that. So if I quickly flip this on, and we've got a capacitor voltage building here. If I wanted to discharge it, I'll switch the power supply off. If I wanted to discharge that very quickly, I'm just going to take two probes and go across the capacitor like this, and we see its voltage discharges away to nothing. So, for the experiment itself, we've got everything set up. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the current and we should see the current starts out at a fairly high value and falls away to nothing. We've got the voltage across the capacitor, which should grow as time goes on. And we've got the voltage across the resistor, which should fall as time goes on. Let's switch on the power supply. We start with the high current, which is falling. The capacitor voltage is building and the resistor voltage is falling. Remember your time constant of the circuit, 100 microfarad capacitor, 100,000 ohm resistor gives a time constant of 10 seconds, 5 time constants to fully charge. If we were counting this all the way, we know it's fully charged when the current falls away to virtually nothing. We would need to range the meter down a little, because the current's getting smaller and smaller and when the capacitor voltage pretty much equals the supply voltage. The capacitor voltage, when using metering like this, will never equal the supply voltage simply because even though the multimeters have a very high resistance, there's still leakage current through them.
At this point, it should be fairly obvious that it's taken around about a minute, 50 seconds to a minute, for this voltage to stabilise, for the current to fall away to virtually nothing. At the moment, it's about one microamp, and there is very, very little voltage across the resistor. Therefore, in a circuit that contains a capacitor, a DC circuit that contains a capacitor, after five time constants, we can say that virtually no current flows through the circuit. The only current that's flowing through this circuit is the current that is flowing through these meters.